Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for coming to this session on automating Iris instances uh, configuration. My name is Luca Ravazzolo and I work as a product manager at InterSystems and I love all things cloud. So let's see the agenda for today. Well, first of all, we're going to try to understand, you know, uh, the context that we are operating within and why why that is important, and what's expected, and where you know the world is going. The second one is, you know, well, what is this CPF merge file then? Then we're going to have a look at the demo, a couple of closing remarks. The benefit for you today are that um, you'll be able to understand what the CPF merge file is, its value. Uh, because you'll see in action, so it should be pretty straightforward and intuitive. So in the cloud era, there is a common language called automation, right? In other words, uh, wherever you look, automation is widely spoken. Um, infrastructure as code, cloud computing, cloud native, container-based app, if you have them, if you want to go to that, uh, you know, in that, that new technology area, microservices architecture, DevOps, the old DevSecOps, uh, security operation, and, you know, all the shift left responsibility of, you know, I'm building an artifact and then I'm shipping it for running it. You know, and why is that? Well, it's about simplifying, really. If you think about simplifying operational tasks uh, to bring our application to fruition in a consistent and repeatable way. Uh, because we know the software that doesn't run does not earn. And so we need to be able to do that consistently and repeatably and with quality. So it's about optimization, really. Freeing up processes and resources and looking at all the platforms that we have here on the slides, right, with AWS, Azure, and more things that run on on-prem like VMware, Tanzu, Diamante, etc. You know, it's about enhancing the provisioning speed, enhancing the setup speed, the configuration accuracy, and the management all via automation. Still, though, maintaining a super high quality, okay, and fa failure to be extremely low. Um, so bottom line of the focus of what we're talking about today is, um, you know, the speed of execution is super important through automation, of course. Uh, cost reduction is another that's very important in my mind because we have fewer uh, human resources involved because, you know, we, you, you look at automating through, through declaration, through files, through, through programmability. And, then, and therefore there's a removal risk because we're removing a human-induced error. So where do we start? Let's start from the beginning. We have an RS.CPF file uh, that, that you may or may not know. Um, and uh, through this uh, configuration uh, parameter file, we, we are actually able to, to configure uh, an RS instance. Uh, problem is many of these uh, parameters actually where we're going to have a look at a running instance they're like output only and there's only a few that can, you can actually you know, really affect, affect uh, as, as an input on, only parameter. Um, so the point is then, how else uh, can we automate the configuration of, of a system? Uh, how else can I start adopting, you know, kind of you know, DevOps or GitOps, you know, procedure, or simply put under source control, you know, the definition of, of a particular environment, you know, I want to have a cluster uh, for, for testing purposes, you know, how do I configure that? What kind of resources do I have? What, what, what kind of resources do I want to utilize? How can I, can I just like freeze that definition and uh, use it repeatably or, or over and over again? You know, what option to, do I have? Well, at InterSystems, we have the present installer manifest. It starts life inside InterSystems Aris. It uses an internal API, and you must define you know, the X data block, XML data block, if you want to run anything, you need to define the methods. Um, the, the old studio used to help you out in that. Uh, and then you must extrapolate that definition, you know, bring it out of it, and uh, on, the, on the other side of Aris, and, um, um, and, and make sure that, it, that when you pass it in uh, to start an instance, that, that you call inside, inside into systems RS through a session. And, you know, the whole thing is a little, you know, the lot, lot of steps is very cumbersome. Um, but, you know, it's also fair to say that it's been, it's been proven and it it's very, very powerful, very flexible. But, you know, the question then is, uh, how can we modernize that? How can we uh, step 
on the you know declarative way of working uh, where things uh, where, where commands or declaration uh, are idempotent uh, you know they they run only once the you know if I ask to create a one database it's only that one database that gets created even if I run it again and and where where you know there's also you know a separation of concern between both code and data you know how can we improve all this well, uh, with the CPF merge file, we now have the possibility to declare the ultimate state of an RS instance versus having to script, frankly, you know, a very, very good solution with percent installer by Camberson to, to, to pick up all these pieces and put them together, etc. CPF merge then allows us to define input parameters versus you know, the CPF file itself. And the new configuration that we're we supplying to the instance is merged um, into the existing as the system starts or before all the demons are started up, etc. And what what tells InterSystems Iris that that is actually happening is the var variable ISC CPF merge file that you see at the bottom of the slide here, which becomes you know the flag to trigger the, the the operation, but also gives me you know the exact location of where my my configuration is. Uh, configuration file is. Uh, the other important thing here to, to understand is that the file is external and uh, this is great because then I can put under source control, I can do, uh, you know, I can really review it with other people and I can I can use in a true, you know, git ops type, type of, of operation. Last but not least, it is a familiar format, and uh, and yes, uh, we could have uh, used you know JSON, YAML, TOML, you know, but uh, you know what um, would we have achieved with that? It's it's just you know a format. Uh, the point is the the format that we have is very simple, very understandable, uh, and uh, you know even uh, uh, even prospect will be able to you know to, to gain insight in, into the, the the construct of the file very very easily. So. This is what the CPF merge file is, but there's more value to grasp, so let's go ahead with a couple of slides. So, um, whatever the scenario you find yourself in, you know, public cloud, private cloud, we probably end up all working in an hybrid mode. Um, because we're talking cloud, because we're talking elastic resources, because we're talking about you know API based, you know availability of resources, you know we end up you know if even with you know with a database like InterSystems RS with data platform like InterSystems RS to have multiple instances. Think for example as um, as an example of the fact that if I want a resilient service, I need at least two instances running a uh, configured in an InterSystems RS uh, mirror. And uh, so all of a sudden I have two nodes, right? And what if I need to scale? We'll probably have an ECP tier. Um, if I start working with shards, I have shard node and shard compute nodes. So, you know, we're really looking at, you know, automating this uh, a, a cluster definition, but but also uh, because we have more than one more, more than one instance. And so wouldn't it be nice if this instance that we have here on our slide here is able to be you know completely self-aware of what's happening and he understands its role and what it has to do. And wouldn't it be nice then if this instance really would be completely autonomous so that through you know simple declaration uh, the instance Instance can go and create a resource, you know, or modify an existing resources, or delete if I don't need it any, anymore. And, and this is where 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 we're going with the CPF merge file. So now we're going to see the details of configuring, you know, uh, what is uh, you know an, an interesting setup, which is our InterSystems RS mirror technology, which is a strong resilient point of, uh, of our data platform and uh, simply by setting a mirror set name a mirror and a mirror member to you know you want this this first instance to start either as a primary or as a backup or as a, even you know a, a remote you know um, disaster recovery asynchronous uh, no, um, instance somewhere else you can you can do this very simply just by a simple definition like that uh, obviously, you can also mark databases uh, uh, ready to be, you know, mirrored, and uh, you can also define, you know, if you want the um, uh, the, the third node, the arbiter node, um, for uh, for, um, for for this mirror pair, the other finding. Furthermore, there is a new 
a new section in the CPF merge file called actions and as you can as you'd expect this is very powerful um, here we can really you know, create modify delete into systems areas resources of our liking the interface really allows us to leverage the rich set of API that we are within uh, inter within the intersystems RS data platform engine and um, and then you know uh, you you can really do anything you like here, and it's very very powerful. Um, so the example here is I'm creating a database, I create a, defining a namespace, I'm uh, defining a, an application, and this action uh, to get together with the other settings of the RSCPF file that, that we know allows us to really uh, declare the ultimate state of an instance um, of an instance that, that we want to have. And the beauty of all this is that you know. Uh, each each instance is self-aware, is autonomous now to configure itself. If it is an, an ECP client, if it is a backup a member of a mirror pair, it knows what to do, how to register itself with the primary, etc., etc. This is extremely powerful, of course, because then you know none of us have to have headaches. Uh, where's the documentation? How do I do this, etc., etc. And more to the point, I can automate their world. So. Um, Demo time, let's go and see in action and let's see if we can learn a few more tricks of the CPF merge file. And here we are with the demo. First of all, let me uh, show you how I scripted and provisioned this small cluster solution made up of a mirror pair of instances plus interstices of arbiter. Here we have a Docker Compose uh, that I, I define because it's useful and, and quick for me on, on my laptop but you know it could be a Terraform script, it could be an AWS cloud formation or any a configuration management tool like Ansible, Pape, Shift, Solstack, etc. or your own script. The bottom line is that um, it's a simple three instance cluster with a mirror pair and an arbiter. And let me just highlight uh, the three main components of this small cluster. So the first one is RS1 of course and then you see that I go RS2 down here. So RS1 is the name I gave to the first node of my app application and is the designated to start as the primary member of the mirror pair. The main parameters are here are the uh, container image of course which is your know, container image I prepared based on the systems RS uh, original container so I put my code in there and then we have the uh, CPF merge file so as we saw from the slides you know it is uh, a, it's the flag that says you know have, have a, a, a configuration file to, to inject in the RS instance and also the location where that uh, that configuration file is. RS2 is pretty much the same. We have the same image. Uh, as you notice, probably, you know, I start the uh, C agent, I pass the key, etc. Other other details and port numbers, but then the main thing is RCPF merge file. And you will notice that uh, compared to the first one here, I have a mirrorprimary.conf and here mirrorbackup.conf because I have two uh, different uh, instance type that uh, need to behave slightly different as they configure themselves as they stand up. And of course, then I've got um, uh, the, the third instance here is, is an arbiter there that, that is running. So uh, let's kind of look at this uh, at this config file. So we'll go the the primary uh, mirrorprimary.conf, and then we'll see a mirrorbackup.conf. Um, so um, well, first of all, uh, I just call them .conf, but note that you know you can call them whatever you want and this is the file where you can configure a mirror pair and of course any parameter you care <laughs> and let's start with all important mirror set name the first parameter you see here in the startup but please note how this looks familiar for the people who have been using a cpf file rs.cpf file then the salt and hash password and then I got the arbiter directive uh, and then lots of you know all the other parameters basically that you can configure um, in, the, in the RCPF you can pass them in but I've commented, commented them all out on purpose so that we can highlight just what we're interested then there's this new action section of the CPF merge file that allows to find resources any, any type of resource in, uh, in InterSystems RS and uh, here we have you know the uh, uh, the crud uh, the create read update and delete operation that we can perform here within this this new action and here you can see the you know I create a database file so the directory may I tell it that actually this is part of a mirror set so I need to obviously to report the the same uh, you know mirror set name that I've defined uh, in the startup um, 
the and then created the actual database uh, and then you know, create define a namespace um, and defining you know, where the data is and where the code is and um, so let's go have a look at the the mirror backup so it's pretty similar uh, so we start with the mirror set name, of course, has to be we're, we're connecting the same mirror set. Um, but the mirror member here is obviously a backup, and then I need also reference to where the primary is, of course. And then the rest is pretty much the same. So um, uh, I'm not going to comment, comment any further. So let's go and see if things worked out okay as I launched the service before the presentations. Uh, so let's go back here. I launched the um, uh, Docker Compose job that start with SH is just a simple um, a, stim a simple wrapper to Docker Compose app to bring up that Docker Compose definition that, that, that we saw here. Um, let's have a look if the uh, its instances are running. Okay, all three containers are running. I've got the RS1, I've got the Arbiter, I've got an RS2 here. So it looks pretty good. Let's have a look at the, at the logs frame, the standard output. If it looks okay, if there are many main errors coming through, everything looks okay. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, uh, so RS1 so it looks like it's a mirror server. Let's go and have a look from the portal if we can see, uh, you know, uh, what it looks like. Just connect up system administration, configuration, mirror settings, and I can see that uh, uh, this is, is, is a primary and it's part of the mirror set name, my mirror's name, and it's connected to the Arbiter, so that looks good. Let's go look at the uh, the backup member. And it's the backup, and again it's connected uh, to the to the Arbiter, so everything everything looks okay. Uh, let's go back to the first node, so it's RS1. And let's go have a look at the configuration. Let's have a look at namespace if they're correctly configured, because we said we wanted a my app data. Um, uh, sorry, my app namespace with a my app data database and uh, the code in users. So that looks correct. Let's double check if local databases are correctly set up. I've got my app data, and yes, it is mirror. It's a mirror database uh, in the path that we that we decided to mount, etc. So the proof of the pudding, I guess, is in setting setting a global. See if it's co correctly replicated. So let's. Um, Let's pick up the name or uh, and connect to it and run straight into into the session. Our session. Let's switch to the namespace my app. Okay, and let's try a small writing here. And here are the writing, here's the writing. And there we go. And now we go out and we switch instance. We go to RS2, which is the backup. And we switch namespace. And let's check if that global is being replicated. And it is. And so um, that's it, folks. That is how simple it is to automate InterSystems RS Ultima instance state that we want with a new CPF merge file, um, and this um, and this even um, uh, even when configured in a complex environment like InterSystems RS mirroring. So the CPF merge file is, as you see, intuitive, easy to implement, and fully usable in any environment, not just container, even traditional uh, tarball install. So thank you very much for that. Um, Let's go back to some wrapping up. Thank you. And after the demo, here we are. Additional information, only a couple of links. Uh, the first one, uh, the first bitly one, refers to the documentation page that we that we, that we started to uh, uh, to write. The second one is on a GitHub in our system community. I'm just going to share the code that that you've seen it uses, so you can uh, quickly uh, and easily you know get up to speed with CPF merge file. And with this. Thank you very much for your time, uh, and I hope you know uh, we're going to see a lot more automation from everybody with the CPF merge file. Thank you. Bye bye.